Hello guys, it is Briggsy Boy here. Welcome back to the channel and today I have another of my FIFA 18 Blackburn Rovers career mode episodes for you guys to sit back and enjoy. So uh, last episode didn't go fully to plan. I think we managed to lose two or three of those league matches that we had, but we did manage to get through to the third round of the FA Cup. Things aren't going too bad, we're still fifth in the league. Halfway through the season now on 37 points, but we start off today's episode with the bat at home on Boxing Day against Rochdale. And this is the team that we have gone for. As you can see, quite a lot of changes have gone on here through to tiredness, injuries and suspensions. Mulgrew being the main man that we will miss in this game, but the likes of Bennett and Caddis will also be out. So Luke Wyler starts in goal, and we've got Niambi and Sam Hart as the two full-backs. Williams goes to centre-back for the first time this season, and he's joined by Paul Downing. Ben Gladwin is playing in CDM, with Peter Whittingham in centre-mid. He's joined by Willem Tomlinson, which he makes his first debut starting for us so far this season, so a lot of pressure on him. Bradley Dack starts in cam, and then Marcus Antonsen and Dominic Samuel make up the two strikers. Of course, Antonsen was in fine form last episode when he managed to get a hat-trick at Peterborough away. But anyway, let's get into the first match of the episode then against Rochdale at home and let's try and kick off with a win. So it's an early corner for Rochdale then. Can this arise any problems for us? Oh, and they've got a shot on that back post but it's easy for Jason Lutweiler to handle. To Willem Tomlinson, he's put up a good show so far for us. Samuel finds the through ball slip to Bradley Dack. We turn. He has the shot. But it's into the hands comfortably for the Rochdale keeper. Good interception by Ryan Niambi there on his toes in this match so far. Good forward pass. Peter Whittingham. 1-0. What a strike by Whittingham. Gets us the lead against Rochdale. After not even 20 minutes have gone on the clock. I mean, it took him some time to turn and get the shot away but when he did it was really in power and placement you can't deny that wonderful finish by the captain in this match and it was unusual to him so far up the pitch but he took his chance and he took it well good goal by Peter Whittingham a trademark finish that you would expect from him it's right into that bottom corner clinical finishing and it gets us the 1-0 lead against Rochdale great start for us Rochdale corner kick Davis to be the taker Puts it in, the header, good save from Luke Wiley, will be another corner kick there, good stop. And he may have kept us from conceding there, but the danger's still there, and they've equalised, brilliant headed goal, and there's no denying that. Although I did think it was going to loop over the goal there, it's nestled right into that far corner, and that is a brilliant header, there's no denying that. Luke Wiley couldn't get to that, and we did. Have a man on the line, Niambi I do believe was that man on the line but he just seemed to stand there and that was an easy goal in terms of Rochdale there and an unexpected one at that after just taking the lead five minutes later from that corner kick we've conceded and that has been a common reoccurrence so far this season, something that we do need to try and avoid. And Marcus Antonsen skips around that defender, he's got some pace and he's using it here because we could be through. We know he can finish it. Oh, and I'm not sure if the defender got a touch onto that or not. And he did. It is a corner kick. One which Bradley Dack will be the taker of. It's at the far post. And Gladwin, I thought he was going to touch that there, but too slow. He does win the rebound back. Put it into the box and nobody can get on it in the end. Here's Dunn. Puts one into the middle. And he strikes it, brilliant save from Luke Weiler, but it's our defending that's letting us down. That save from Luke Weiler was a brilliant stop, because it was our defensive error, but a brilliant save to stop that one. Hit him in the face, actually. Goes out for a corner kick. Whipped in by Camps. Many Rochdale men in the box, but Luke Weiler picks that up fairly easily. Camps, he strikes, just goes wide, I thought it went in for a minute there by the way, it hit the goal. Full time whistle goes in and it is a 1-1 draw against Rochdale, certainly not what I was after. However, I do think a large part of that result is due to the formation that we were playing. 
A lot of our key players were out missing and we worked with what we had. But it is a point we'll move forward from that, take it and hopefully get a win in our next match in the league. So moving swiftly on from that draw against Rochdale, it does mean that we drop out of the playoffs area in 7th position on 38 points, which isn't a deal breaker. We are still only a couple of points behind leaders Walsall. But um, this is a squad that we've gone for for our next game against Scunthorpe United. So Luke Wyler st stays in goal after a good game, I believe, against Rochdale. Paul Caddis comes in in right back. Lenny Hun and Mulgrew make up the two centre-back roles. Jack Dole comes in to left back. Conway in the left mid position. Bennett on the right. Evans and Smallwood make up the two centre mid roles, with Dominic Samuel playing just behind Marcus Antonsen as the strikers. But um, hopefully we'll be able to get a win against Scunthorpe. They're about mid-table at the moment, so they are for, for the taking, really, to get the win. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to climb back into that playoff area and get the confidence going again in the squad. But anyway, let's get into our next match. Elliot Bennett, again, providing that width that we were missing in that Rochdale game, already making a difference. Paul Caddis puts one in, early-headed, early-headed goal, and I think Antonsen gets it. But it's after just four minutes, and that is the difference that I've been a first-team squad out has. I do apologise, Craig Conway, of all people, was actually the man in the box who crept up unmarked, banged that header in, and what a goal it was. Gets around that defender fairly easily, and another one. Samuel's been brilliant in these opening minutes. So has Craig Conway, with a brilliant pass to Jack Doyle. He puts the ball into the middle, 2-0. What a volleyed goal. Gets us 2-0 up against Scunthorpe. Not even quarter of an hour gone. Elliot Bennett, our other winger, into the centre of the box. Brilliant delivery from Jack Doyle. With that pass from Conway, giving him that attackive surge there. Brilliant play from him. Bennett in the middle of the box, and he's going to finish them all day long. He's a top-class player, and that is a top-class goal. Brilliant finish from Elliot Bennett. Back in his fourth in the league this season, getting us 2 0 up against Scunthorpe. What a game this has turned out to be. So it will be a Scunthorpe corner. We've got a knack of conceding at corners, hopefully not this time. And it just loops over the bar there by Wallace. Antonson. Good through ball to Corey Evans. And there's Bennett to help him on this attack. Cuts inside. Takes the shot. Brilliant save from Jilks, getting low to save that one. Elliot Bennett, and he has been the engine in this match, constantly running up and down that wing, providing attacks for us. He puts one into the middle. What a strike that was, but more importantly, what a save from Matt Jilks in goal. He certainly stopped one or two. Brilliant chances from us. Conway whips the ball in. Can't quite come to anything there. Daryl Lenihan comes up the pitch to take a shot. Tipped over. Brilliant opportunity there for a goal. Here's Dwayne Holmes for Scunthorpe United. Puts one in on that back post. Good header away, but it's still in a danger area. And it was Lee Novak there with that header into the hands of Lutweiler. Two one Scunthorpe back in this one. Might have been a bit of a scruffy goal. Lee Novak again, his name does ring a bell from the previous encounter and he's on the score sheet again for United and he gets what is his seventh goal in the league so far and suddenly we've got to be careful here, do we go attackive to get that extra goal, that cushion or do we sit back and make sure that Scunthorpe don't get a point out of us. Harry Chapman, good attackive response from us, puts a brilliant ball in, 3-1, Dominic Samuel with the header, gets us that goal cushion that I was on about, just two or three minutes prior to Lee Novak's goal for Scunthorpe, and we are back in control of this match, Chapman running up and down that wing, brilliant cross, Samuel unmarks on the back post and it's a simple nodded header for him. One of the easiest goals he's probably scored this season. Samuel. Samuel strikes just wide. And that was a very good effort to try and get his second goal. But that is how this one ends. 
And it is a 3-1 win for us then. Brilliant result there against Scunthorpe. And let's carry on into our next match a couple of days later against Rotherham. So following on from that win against Scunthorpe, as you can see, we moved to fourth in that league table. 25 games played, 41 points. So not too bad, really. Just three points behind current league leaders, Plymouth Argyle. So we move on to our next match against Rotherham away on New Year's Day. And... Um, not having much of a break from that Scunthorpe match. As you can see, the squad isn't looking too good. A lot of work is going to have to be done from me to see who can play, who's out, who's in, and uh, just work around who we've got, really. But uh, some important information that I think I should just shed a bit of light on. So, um, Lewis Travis has gone. We sold him to Galway United. And uh, Jack Doyle has gone on a one-year loan to Bohemian FC, who I do think are in the Irish division, I could be wrong. But um, that's all you need to know about, really. Everything else has stayed the same. I have got quite a few players in our transfer hub. Many of them are either full-backs or wingers, so as you can see, a couple of left-backs. Sesson Young and Kelly in particular caught my eye, so we might put bids in for them. There's also a few others here, a uh, couple of these actually being low on contract, meaning that we could get them for free by the end of the season if their contract is not renewed. Um, but I am now going to make a couple of changes to the squad, put out the lineup which I think will best work. So the lineup that I've decided to go for is David Ray coming back into goal, Ryan Niambi pulled down in Scott Wharton and Derek Williams making up the new four in defence. Sam Hart has got to step up to the plate in playing left mid. Ben Gladwin and Peter Whittinger make up the two centre mids. The youth prodigy Mulder, he comes in in right mid with Bennett being tired. Bradley Dack comes into that cam slash centre forward role. And Connor Chaplin, the lone striker in this match. So then let's get into our third league match of the episode and hope that we can get this good run of form going by getting a win against Rotherham. Here's Peter Whittingham. And Gladwin, he takes an early shot, just raises over the bar there, but not a bad effort. Is Mulder, puts on a good pass to Chaplin there, he finds Gladwin, good save from Rotherham's keeper, puts it out from a block from his legs, and organised nicely at the back by Rotherham. Chaplin, he shoots! Rattles the crossbar, and the keeper was stunned by that one, you could tell. I wasn't expecting it to certainly be that accurate, but a brilliant effort nonetheless. Chaplin. And he surges forward. A lot quicker than that Rotherham defence, clearly. Puts it very out wide to Derek Williams, not quite sure how that happened. But he strikes it just over the crossbar. We know he has one in his locker, and that is clearly shown there. Brilliant strike. Just glazes over though. And that's Stamina to outdo the Rotherham man there. Puts one into the middle. Cleared away. Gladwin. Chapman strikes. Brilliant save from the Rotherham keeper. He's kept us out on quite a few occasions now. Chapman to Chaplin. Look at him surge through that defence. He takes the shot. 1 0. What a goal! Connor Chaplin, just when I thought this game looked like it could be a boring nil-nil draw, he livens up the game. Here's that difference up top as that lone striker just give him the ball and watch him go. That weaving in and out that he used, the pace that he had, and then to slot it away right in to that bottom corner against a Rotherham keeper that has been in fire in this match. He finds his place perfectly, and that is... As good a finish as you're going to see from us this season. It's a brilliant one. And Connor Chaplin on the score sheet. First time in a while, I must admit. And what a goal that was. We lead 1-0 against Rotherham then. Here's Gladwin. Gladwin strikes just over the bar there. We'll go for a corner kick. Mulder, the taker. Got it out wide. Gladwin struggles to win that header though. And now Rotherham on the break. Here's Kiefer Moore. Passes out wide to Joe Newell. A lethargic, tired player now. Weaves in and out well. 
Puts it into the middle. Kiefer Moore! Oh, and it's 1-1. That is absolutely heartbreaking for us. A dribbled goal right into that bottom corner. Posting in. I thought it was... I thought Ray was going to turn around to get a hand on it. The speed it was going. And Rotherham will be buzzing about that goal right at the end. Like, 78th minute. Just when I thought we deserved to get the three points here done and dusted. It does go to 1-1 then against Rotherham. And he's Kiefer Moore! Hits the crossbar. I thought he was going to get his second there. And that would have been truly heartbreaking. Full-time whistle goes in, and it is a very, very upsetting draw against Rotherham there. I think we deserve the win, to be honest. The hard work that we put in, it is unlucky, but a good performance. A point is better than zero at the end of the day, but I just think we could have got three from what happened and the chances that we created. So, guys, as you can see, I have been busy on my transfer hub, just looking up a few players, seeing what we can get sorted in this transfer window in January. And the main one that I've got so far is Billy Bodden, of course, Bristol Rovers uh, winger, now playing for Preston. Uh, we have managed to get him free. Uh, basically, he's contracted six months left, meaning that we could start negotiating with him, seeing if he could sign for us next season. And he has accepted. Weekly wage of seven grand he will be on. And we just put a signing bonus of 100,000. So his squad role for us will be important. Meaning he doesn't have to play every game. But it would be nice to have him and Bennett on the wings. Hopefully in the championship next season. So a very good deal there. A free transfer really. But it won't kick in until the end of the season. When he has finished his time at Bristol Rovers. So after having three league games in a row. We do now switch over to the Emirates FA Cup where we take part in our third round tie against QPR. So this is the team that I've gone for for this match, making quite a few changes, and it is one of our stronger teams. So David Ray starts in goal with Paul Caddis, Daryl Ennehan, Charlie Mulgrew and Derek Williams making up the four in defence. Harry Chapman plays in left mid with Bennett on the right. Evans and Smallwood make up the two centre mid roles with Bradley Dack playing in cam and then Marcus Antonsen as the lone striker. But anyway, let's get into this match against QPR and hopefully get a win. Brilliant through ball there to Elliot Bennett landed straight at his feet. Brilliant ball control. He surges forward, round the defence, shoots, hits the crossbar, the rebound, and we go 1-0 up. What a brilliant goal. I mean, you've got to give more of the credit to Elliot Bennett. The work he did on the ball there, especially that through ball from Harry Chapman, it was delightful. Bennett did the rest, and all Antonson had to do was simply volley it into an open goal, as we can see there. Brilliant work from all the team, really. Antonson, the man with the goal, that gets us that one goal in front. And he's first in the Emirates FA Cup. First of many, hopefully. We lead 1-0 against QPR. Antonson puts it out wide to Harry Chapman. Chapman is a strike. Comes off the defender and again shoots. That time it blazes over the bar. Then it spreads the play to Bradley Dack. Antonson runs onto that. And it is a good block from the defender. A corner kick to come. Bradley Dack takes it. Looking for the head. And we do get one, but it's straight to the hand of Alex Smithies. Here's Dominic Samuel. Antonson. Antonson strikes just wide of Smithies. Far post there. Bradley Dack. Out wide to Conway, and it is deflected off the QPR defender for a corner kick. Bradley Dack takes it. Nice bit of curve on it. Whittingham can't win the header though, but it will come back out wide. Lennyhan picks it up. Whips one in. Oh, and that volley was a free one for Whittingham, and he absolutely scuffed the chance. That could have been 2 0 there, but it flies over the crossbar. And some spin on it. Too much power maybe, but a bad miss nevertheless. Flicked on there from Antonson to Dominic Samuel and we could be through. Bradley Dak. Dak shoots and I think a deflection came off that. 
and it did indeed. Dak takes the corner late on in the game, and the header goes back out wide, and that is a tame hit there. It was far over the goal from Bradley Dak. Full time whistle goes in, and it is a 1 0 victory over QPR in the third round of the FA Cup. Playing a strong lineup paid off for us. It's a good win against the championship side there, and we had plenty of chances in that match. It wasn't as though we were the outcasts, because as you can see, they only had two shots, we had 13. So we certainly made ourselves present in that game. So I did just receive an email warning me that Liam Feeney will be returning back on loan from Cardiff, where he was previously. It was only a short loan, but uh, even though that means we've got a new right mid in the squad, I'm going to try and sell him. I don't want to renew his contract. He's on quite a big wage, actually. So worst case scenario is at the end of the season, he just ends up going somewhere to a club for free. Because uh, he's on too much money at the end of the day, and that is the sort of player that we need to get rid of, because we don't need him in our plans. Of course, Bennett and Bodin will be the two wingers next season as things stand. So then, guys, after that good FA Cup win against QPR, we do return to league action against Wimbledon away. We are currently sixth in that league table with a game in hand on 42 points. Uh, joint on points with Bradford actually who were currently leading the league a couple of games ago but that is where I'm going to end this episode I'm going to leave it like this because next time we come round to it we'll have some league action hopefully we'll get to the end of January and the transfer window there's a few more players that I've shortlisted that we could be putting bids in for or looking to sign at the end of the season on freeze but uh, a lot of stuff's happening we've got some good players lined up the team seems to be gelling well and we've managed to get quite a few wins in this episode so overall things are looking good and hopefully they'll continue to be like this in the next one. But anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you and goodbye.